Silly Saturday Musings. Good evening. Hello out there. Let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from. This is a random. I just had so much dropping in, so much insight, so much wisdom, so much guidance and direction. I don't know if any of you out there go through these periods where everything starts making sense. Like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. That's what I need to do. That's what I should be doing. That's perfect. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go in this direction. Great. Everything since this last new moon has been boom, 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 wheels in motion, moving and shaking. Literally, everything has guided me and shown me a sign and they're all connecting. The dots, you know, the interweaving, some call it Indra's web, if you know anything about that. And I wanted to share that in continuation of my last live last weekend when I was discussing what was so beautiful about appreciation being creation and creation is a collective collaboration. See, here's the beauty. We are not we, as in me and you. There is no separation. And if you can really wrap your head around this, it is such a beautiful, like, wow, kapow. Because essentially, everything's predetermined. We have determined that we are going to agree upon form because we give it attention, we give it reverence, we give it appreciation. It creates form because we make it matter. If that makes sense to anybody, let me know because energy is in constant motion and the only reason it takes form is because it matters. There's such a play on words. This is a thing that I love about life. Life is supposed to be this divine expression, this joy, this creation, not to be taken so serious that we're dogmatic and oh, there's rules and regulations and we must abide and this and that. No, you need to find the joy, you need to find the play, the comedy, the humor, the humility. Because everything and anything that you think you want, wish or desire isn't even really who you are. Think about that. Everything from the time you were conceived has already been set in motion and predetermined for you, whether from your external environment, your soul guidance, or your inner verse, because what's a verse? A verse is a script. Okay, think about that. We live in a vast universe, universe, you in verse, you in script, you living a life, a story, a play, creation. And then we have the inner verse. What is the story that we are playing? What is the record, what is the constant narrative that we have, a, we have attached to, we have adapted to, that we believe so strongly in? Do you realize even you are so convinced you rarely question your own self? You rarely question your own thoughts, beliefs, understandings, what you even see. Do you ever question what you have agreed upon as what you see. I was postulating this the other day when I finished teaching yoga about how rarely do we consider what we think isn't even really something that's true to us. A lot of our thoughts are attachments, our addictions, our belief systems are our biggest addiction we have been so conditioned to think that what we think matters. Well, it does. You know why? Because it takes form. Because for us, it is our reality. Because we make it matter. 
Think about that. Our storyline says this matters. So therefore, we all want significance. We're special because of that matter. Whatever it is we're attached to, doesn't matter who you are, what you adapt or you uh, associate yourself with, whatever labels you give yourself, I want you to consider how you are separating yourself. The more you put a label on yourself, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm a mother, I'm a son, I'm a dog, cat, whatever. If you give yourself a label, you have just divided. You have caused the separation. And I hate to say this, but if you look around in our societies, our cultures, the conditioning, the social engineering has been all about keeping us divided instead of recognizing we are souls living a human existence that we really came here to remind each other to remember, re-member. We're all members creating a whole. Each of us is a drop of the ocean that makes up the whole. That makes us collective. And everything that I think I want isn't even really who I am. What I think I am is not who I am. And I can't even relate to who I am because it's not without you that I can be experienced. That experiencing ourselves, relating to another is how relationship is what defines life. We came here to relate to another so that we could experience one another experiencing ourselves. And when the ego wants to take credit for something, it needs to take a step back and observe how attached it is to the stories that have pervaded, that have created, that have been perpetuated. Our stories are like a broken record. Can you believe that we believe our beliefs? They're not real. They're imagined. But they become real. They become manifested, they become form because we give them so much energy, sometimes exhausting. And let me tell you, if it's exhausting, it is not in alignment with your soul. Anything that's a struggle shows that you're trying to prove yourself worthy, shows that you're going out of alignment of your soul. It is out of your true nature and you're just following the system, you're following the narrative that was laid out for you. Now, there's so much more depth to this. Again, going back to, have you ever sat with everything you think, everything you think you are, everything you think you want, you think you desire, that you think you need to have, that you've even experienced? The only reason it matters to you is because of the attachment you have to it. Because matter doesn't take form unless you give acknowledgement, you send it energy, you give it attention, you give it focus. Because appreciation is what makes something grow, makes it matter, puts it into form. Matter doesn't exist until you give it that focus, that appreciation. Where attention goes, energy flows. And only you can make form and matter from here and all of this. So we are extremely powerful manifestors. Attachment is this expectation, this dogma. It's a belief system. Attachment is the dogma, this is this. Attachment is, I can't let this go. It's attachment is a dependency. Attachment is fear. Can you let go of everything you think you know? Can you align with the flow of your own soul? Can you follow the path of least resistance? without resisting the unknown. Again, sitting with the idea that 
what I think I want, wish, desire has been influenced from everything, advertising, magazines, television, movies. You see something somebody else has and you assume that you want that because you like it. But how do you even like it? You had to be conditioned into believing it was something like a bull that others like it so therefore you like it. Now, some of us were a little bit more rebellious and maybe we like things that other people don't or we explicitly choose things that are unique and outside of the main agreed upon fashion or ideal, you know, the white picket fence of a house. Maybe you don't subscribe to that. Maybe you want something different, but the general consensus has this idea that I will have this type of life, but that's because of the conditioning, the, the culturing, culturing. We are sitting in a mixing pot, stewing in these beliefs, these ideas, these narratives, these stories that if my parents had it, that's what I need to want. My parents taught me, their parents taught them. It's called legacy. And so when you're sitting in a stew being cultured, created through this steeping and the more you're influenced by your environment because you are in it 24 seven, it's really hard to get out of that. It's really hard to shift that belief system unless you're willing to do the work that it takes to change the habits. It takes at least 40 days to release an old habit, create a new habit, to change it up. And we're all capable of doing that, but it takes a willingness, it takes a commitment, it takes a desire to want to change, to do something different, to step into the unknown, to face everything and rise when fear pops up, false evidence appearing real, you have the option to, instead of adapting to the fear, facing it, facing everything and rising. That is your power to do something that you've never done before. So again, how many of you out there sit with the idea that, oh my gosh, everything I thought I want, it isn't even what you want. It's just everything you've seen visually, heard, audibly, even tasted. Hey, we've always eaten this way. That's just the way it is. My family is this way, so that's the way I am. We adopt other people's stories. We have adopted legacies. And each generation is coming here. If you can recognize this, I remember this from a childhood that I had, knowing that when I was younger, I knew things that my mother couldn't see and my father couldn't see. My sisters have these conversations about how, wow, you know, they didn't know so much. We know a little bit more. And each generation has a lot more insight to glean that when they say respect your elders, there's also supposed to be a mutual respect of these, these young beings being born, these souls bringing new wisdom to also shake you up, to break up the old crusty. So you're not calcified in these old habits and these routines that have been perpetuated and passed on and on and on and on. That they believe this, so you believe it. You just decided to believe it because it was easier to go along and get along than it was to go against the grain. Because sometimes we think, well, I don't wanna hurt anybody's feelings. I want them to feel more comfortable. So we sit in our own discomfort, misaligned, struggling because the struggle is the misalignment with your own heart and soul struggling with what we know in our heart and soul because we're fearful of rejection we're fearful of abandonment we have all of these old traumas believing thinking see thinking gets you in trouble sometimes and remembering the old past traumas causes them to constantly be there reminding you oh my gosh if i do this this will happen which is the untruth, the untruth. But we collectively are collaborating 
So if you watched my video last weekend, I was sharing how hmm, appreciation is creation and creation is collective collaboration. And here's what it means. When I have this thought, and I mean like a, a true, unique, authentic alignment, integral with my soul, like this dropped in like, oh, wow, this is what I feel in my heart and soul. I am here to serve. I am meant to do. And you may manifest it or you manifest it in the form of someone else showing up in your life who is doing exactly that. And they inspire you because guess what? The spirit within you is connected to the spirit in another. And the ego wants to claim credit that I came up with that idea. You need to drop that. You need to drop that and step back and ask yourself, what if, what if we are so higher mind, we are so connected that my thought about it wasn't just my thought, that it rippled out energetically and this other person picked up on it or they had already been doing it and it rippled into you. See, it's, it's simultaneous. It's not happening individually or back in the past or in the future. It's happening simultaneously, collectively, at all times. Nobody can really take credit for anything because it's something we have predetermined on such a deep level on the universe, the universe, whatever you want to call it, the verse, the storyline, the playwright, the script is ours. It's not yours, not mine. I don't want to take credit for something that I realize is all of ours. How freaking wild is that? That when you can step out of your ego, it's not about surrendering the ego in such a way that you are being a, a doormat. The ego is there to serve you, to guide you. It's supposed to be the witness to observe and go, wow, that was freaking phenomenal. Like my mind goes crazy happy when I get these insights. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is like one for the books. I'm walking out yesterday and with each step, I'm feeling my feet hit the earth. And then I had a moment where I realized, wow, the earth was meeting my feet. Think about that. Nature is meeting you where you're at. Nature is meeting you with every step you take. You may not realize it because you're not present enough to notice that when your foot reaches down toward the earth and it steps upon it, the earth is actually reaching up and meeting your foot at the same time. But we don't slow down enough to recognize or appreciate that. That it's always trying to reconnect us and bring us back. Nature is trying to reconnect us with our own true nature, our inner verse. Each inner verse creates the outer universe, the collective collaboration. Without each and every one of us, we would not be where we're at. So everybody is contributing no matter how you want to look at people and you want to divvy up and separate and divide and oh I'm not like them I'm sorry to break the news to you but we are all alike in some minuscule little way we are all expressions of the God source and I'm serious when I say that you are playing a very key role in this life and don't tread lightly. Dance, sing, like skip, jump. This is the life to be celebrated. We are here to recognize that when I see art, for example, you ever have that moment when you go, wow, oh my gosh, that speaks to my heart and my soul. And you know why? Because on a soul level, you were part of creating that or you wouldn't recognize and witness it or see it because it's meeting you exactly where you were at one point when you imagined it. And it then manifested in your visual acuity, your ability to see. You can't see something without having at some point had a thought or even a deep seated belief. The seed was planted long before you ever had the experience and the experience is there for your appreciation because you're the one who created it. 
So think about that, this, this symbiotic creating to be appreciated and by appreciating you are creating. That is the collective collaboration. There is not one thing on this planet that doesn't exist because of you and there is not you without everything that exists on this planet. And when I say that, it's like, whoa, seriously? I mean, the higher mind, it's having fun with each and every one of us. And you gotta stop taking it so darn seriously. The reason I say that is because we are in a time now where things are in the crunch of like, uh, stress. You know why you're feeling stress? Because it's not in line with your heart and soul. And the moment you step into recognizing that there is something else out there for you, not the stress, but you gotta choose that path of least resistance, that path less traveled without resisting it. So yes, if something is, is feeling like, ooh, ooh, be willing to lean into that and know it's okay. It's just guiding you along your way. Mm. I don't know. There was, there's so much more I want to just drop like golden nuggets because there's so much wisdom in being present, uh, being willing to lean into what is coming up and arising in you. All the emotions, all of the thoughts that drop into your head are there for a reason. But learn to discern whether they are immediately yours or you are picking up because we are antennas and we are very sensitive beings. We are still picking up on what is going on with others around us in our community, in the world. It's, it's a ripple effect. We are all connected whether you wanna believe it or not. And you have to be compassionate toward yourself in order to be able to extend the compassion toward others as well as what's going on in the world. We're here to help each other remember who we are. And I mean this at a heart and soul core level. This is not, oh no, not them, only them. Like this is not pick and choose. This is a serious test in resilience, reverence, dedication, determination for healing and remembrance. Because to remember, remember, we're all part of a tribe. We're all part of a family. We're the collective. And to remember is to return to our member, to each other. We're humans. We're here to be with one another, to be better humans. Do you know that we're really here to learn how to better communicate and be better humans to one another? Can you be kind to someone even if they don't agree with everything you agree with? If they have different beliefs than you do? If they are not along their path and you're further along or you're behind and they make you feel threatened? Can you do that? Can you step outside of your ego, your mind that wants to tell them the way it is, the way it should be and control or want more regulation or want less regulation? Can you just be compassionate with the people that you encounter. Serve them up with a smile and understand that we are all at different stages along our evolution, but our predetermined destination is the same place. And everybody's just taking a different ride, a different course, and it's okay. And when you're willing to appreciate that and honor everybody where they're at, they can also do the same in return to you. Because you will only find conflict when you're looking for it. You will only find someone to disagree with when you feel that people need to understand you. If you feel you need to defend yourself, you're gonna attract the types of people that are gonna make you have to defend yourself. You will find that when you're looking to defend yourself or speak your truth or express yourself because people need to understand you, you're gonna draw attack. But when you are in that place of just knowing and just staying true to who you are without the need to impose yourself, to push your beliefs and ideals upon anybody else, you open up the door for others to do the same for you and each other. The more you're willing to evolve and grow and honestly confront your own belief systems and your patterns and shift up 
the way you've been, the more you evolve, you're doing it for humanity. You're not just doing it for yourself and your ancestors. You're doing it for all of us, which is why I'm so passionate about doing the work, going within, being mindful, being present. It is not for the weak. It is not for the timid. It is not for those who want the easy route. I mean, yeah, there is ease. What I believe is if you are consciously taking steps in the direction of your evolution, of your growth, if you are willing to step forward, say, hey, I'm, I want to do the work, but you don't know how, and maybe you do need assistance, and you're fearful, Believe it or not, there are ways. And some of us can assist in a way that takes the pressure off of you. We're not talking about someone doing it for you, but you collaborating with somebody. And so that's where this new modality that dropped in, I don't know of anybody doing this. I really am excited and passionate about what's unfolding because I want to be there to serve each and every one of you in whatever way I can. Because, you know, life does not need to be hard. You do not need to suffer for your greatness. And you do deserve everything your heart and soul is screaming and desiring. You just need to make the choice. And once you make the choice, you set the wheels in motion. And the world is your ocean. On that note, I want to share because my girlfriend sent me a couple bikinis. New York City Deborah, my girlfriend up in New York. She, I already have this beautiful, ooh, this is going to be fun. I already have this beautiful, uh, I call it like a periwinkle purple. And you saw it last weekend when I did my little thing. She sent me blue and hot pink. Unraveling. Oh my gosh, now that's hot pink, baby. Hot pink, baby. Woohoo. I'm excited. So, the one thing I love about these is they have the ruching on the back of the bottom. These look like they might be, yeah. And they have the little laces up on the sides. And the blue is so pretty. Yay! Thank you, Deborah. This shout out for you. I appreciate it. She's one of my girlfriends. My ride or die Italian lifestyle, and it comes with these beads. Really pretty. Ooh, I can do silver or gold, pink, red, or green. Turquoisey. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. She's selling them for reasonable reasonably cheap. Look at these colors. Ooh, the perp the both of them look together. Really cool. So I'd be taking some pictures with those and strut my stuff on the beach. Because I am working on toning it up even more. I used to teach kickboxing a long time ago. Alright. I think that's good. I have so much more to share, but I thought that would be good for now. Hope you are all having an amazing evening. Try not to take life so serious. Get out and play, get out in nature. It's just trying to bring you back to your true nature. Nature meets you where you're at each footstep. One at a time, one foot in front of the other. Nature meets your foot upon each landing. If you are willing to step out, step up and step into life, it will show up for you even greater. Mm, so much love, so much love. Mm, enjoy. Mwah. I love you. Mm -hmm.